button. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. Just clamping the phone in. I'm just tilting it down a bit, giving it a bit of tilt action. Let's lock that off. Stop that panning around. Hello and welcome. Hopefully Nicola will just be able to tell me in a moment if yeah. if I'm on. You are. You're live. Welcome to Live Chat. Remember to guard your privacy and abide by our community guidelines. Remember to abide by community guidelines. Well, good afternoon everybody. Welcome to this dry but relatively chilly Sunday afternoon here up in up in the north. It's chilly. So we've had lunch. Uh, if you've had your lunch, learn more. Button. Uh, that's awesome. So what are we doing today? Well, as the title suggests, I'm just putting my smock on. By the way, as the title suggests, we're going to have some fun with the Merlin too. And I'm going to show you how I use it and the stuff that you get with it, etc. So, just passing this up. So, hi everybody. So, you've got six watching, you've got the action early on. So, yeah, good afternoon. Hope you've had a good day so far. So, this is what we're going to be having a mess with today the Merlin 2 graciously sent to me uh, by Arthur Raveling, who's the CEO and founder of King Arthur's Tools uh, and it was all instigated and arranged by Nick Agar who's, uh, who collaborates with King Arthur's Tools and um, this is part of the, well, the, the, the set that Nick and Arthur sent me Uh, it's is that the right way up? Yeah. Is of course uh, the Nick Agar signature series. So is that Nick Agar uses in uh, much of his beautiful wood turning art. So that's the box that it all came in. Right. So the first. Uh, I've got a, a wooden blank on here and we'll do a bit of power carving on that but also I want to explain to people how I work around and it's not difficult how I work Instagram around. now seed to source mentioned you in their story Leona Fay Woodtunning hello so obviously in, he in here you have the numbers visible for the indexing uh, on the smoke so I'll use the uh, chocolate pie guard analogy uh, as much so, yeah, how do I just, you know, get my spacing when uh, I can't use an indexing? Well, I can use the pin and obviously lock the spindle, uh, but rather than getting uber accurate, again, mine's a bit more organic and freestyle, but we'll get round to explaining that anyway later. So, uh, I've been using the Merlin now for a few weeks. I'm absolutely loving it. So, uh, bag to keep all your bits in. Uh, uh, here's here's the machine itself. So, a lot of you have obviously seen this uh, or seen other people demonstrate it. Uh, but it's there. It is. It's the Merlin two, uh, and this is the variable speed. They sent me the variable speed, which is brilliant. Obviously, you can crank the speed really nice and slow uh, if you want to do some nice uh, finessing and maybe not go as deep into the work and the material as if it was on full speed and you had a really coarse carbide disc. So, absolutely amazing. Uh, really, really, really well built. Lovely and solid and heavy. Uh, and just while I think on the rev range, the motor's rated to about 13,000 RPM. But with the variable seed, it goes through from zero to ten and a half thousand. So you're not overworking the motor. Uh, but as as with all these little uh, mini angle grinders, do not try not to cover up those ventilation slots whilst you're working, because uh, these things 
uh, can get hot. But this is uh, that very powerful motor. It's uh, really, really well built. And also, very important, the safety guard. Steve Combs. Hi, Stevard. Uh, the safety guard on this, if you remove that, you invalidate your warranty. So uh, King Arthur's tools are really serious about uh, keeping you safe while you're using this. If you remove that guard, your warranty is done with. So, uh, but there's a comprehensive instruction. Uh, you get, uh, and I'm sure there's pictures in there and stuff. Uh, but that's got everything you need to know. Uh, about your Merlin in there if you choose to get one. You can get them in the UK from Turner's Retreat, the Tool Post and also Classic Hand Tools and there's lots and lots of different kit variations out there and you can also get the fixed speed uh, angle grinder uh, as opposed to the variable speed, whatever you want to do uh, if you want to go down that route and you can specify what kit you want uh, depending on Shall I tell you who's watching? Tell me, tell me. Um, Leona. Yeah, you said that. St Stace Mate. Yeah, you said that. Steve Coombs. Right, yep, yeah, Steve, yeah, I heard his phone say that. Wiley Woodshed. Ooh. Uh, Steve Twydell, happy birthday, Chris. Happy birthday, Steve. Um, SK Crafts. Hey, up. Um, I think that's everybody for the shop. Cool. I'll just move this tool rest out of the way. When I said move the uh, tool rest, I didn't actually mean throw it off the lathe like I just did. So anyway, this little toolbox storage case does not come with it. This is something that we had. Uh, and rather than, you, you know, just putting all the bits in the back. SK Crafts. Hi, Steve. I've got it in this little storage box here, it just makes it easier for me. Because when I'm on a, do a demonstration, ah, remember when we used to do that, finding stuff quickly and easily in this. Right, so, talk about what you get. The one thing they didn't send me, and they've removed it from this kit, and you, if you buy one, you decided not to give me that. Obviously, they're thinking about me and they don't want me to that out of the, this set. Uh, if I want to get a, an eight tooth chainsaw disc in the future, that's of my own chainsaw bit. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, uh, lots and lots of packs of, uh, these are oversized Velcro hook and loop sanding pads. And you get these probably ranging from about 80 grit to, I don't know, a thousand grit, something like that. Uh, I don't know if they're marked or written on these packets what they are, uh, but I can tell by feel when I open them. But there's lots and lots, probably, I think there's about nine packets there. Uh, is there anything written on these packets, Nicola? Can't see anything. No, it'd be grit, 120 grit. grit. Yeah. So, grit. 120 grams. I'm guessing it had a G on it then. Yeah. And on. Welcome so, to my world. Yeah, lots and lots of uh, these fine uh, to course so that's cool so they're hook and loop so they go onto backing pads so the soft one it's great it's spongy you get a sanding disc on that with it being oversized and this squishing it's going to conform to the profiles on your work whether or not it's a bowl a goblet or you've done a wall hanging or some flat work whatever uh, and this one's a bit firmer so you get those and they are held in place with the sort of like the uh, the washer and the hex nuts. We'll put them there. You get so obviously there for the uh, hook and loop oversized pads. In the hexagonal threaded connector. Backing pad. Now this has come from sort of like the uh, connect to an air powered die grinder and it has the quick connect SK Crafts Hi Nicola and Chris Hiya 
So this is flexible and bendy as well. So it has in there a hole. So you get from uh, coarse to fine, uh, probably about four or six. One, two, three, four. Quick detach. Aluminium oxide discs as well. So there's just a little nub on there and it's literally just half a turn and it's locked in. So you get four of those. Also is a, a felt buffing pad. So you can use it for polishing work. Again, quick detach. And then uh, supplied with it is uh, you get a roll lock developed by 3M Industries, 3M Corporation, the roll lock bristle brush, which is great for tidying up natural edge bark without ripping it off. Uh, and again, Blind Woodsoner, hi Dr. D, hope you're both okay. Yeah, we're fine, thanks David, thank you very much. Hope is okay. Uh, so that's quick detachable uh, and So, we've got Mike Atkinson as well. Hi bro, hope you're well. Uh, and then you have the uh, the range. Now I did have a couple already. So that's the, the one that Nick Agar gave me as a souvenir after I did the day's course with him. There you go. So that's uh, very thin and triple faced. So there's another one in here. I've got it actually fitted to the machine, which I'll be using. So this is the one that Nick has developed. So it has the carbide surface, both on the back, the edge and the face. So it really is very efficient. You can use it almost like a blade and do plunge cutting. Uh, and then obviously you get uh, different medium, coarse, fine. So there you go. And then, just move that the accessory box out of the way. And then I've got one already fitted on. Uh, so again, Nick Agar has developed this, uh, and they've included it in the set. So the three-faced carbide disc. Happy days. So that's basically what you get in your kit. Uh, the Nick Agar Signature Series, lots and lots of different specifications, variables out there, depending on what you want to do. So, yeah, absolutely blown away that uh, Nick Agar and Arthur Avelyn... Uh, do those blades fit the Crocs on? Yes. Yes, they do. Uh, so... Blind Woodsoner, yes, we're good, thanks. Just staying at home. I know. Yeah, so. my phone reads some comments and not all of them, but any of uh, you. Just make sure that's. Stand clear from that. So, right, so I'm going to just get this into round uh, and then get a basic bowl shape on it, and then I'll explain how I use it uh, without being able to see the indexing and the fun you can have. Uh, so. So let's get this mounted, just feel so that's nice and straight. Find my start position. Uh, keep the bottom of the shield tight against my chest 
and it just stops any bits as they do pinging off your chest and up into your nostrils. Uh, so, let's knock this into round quickly. on the bandsaw but again it wouldn't be a circle anyway with me it'd be a polygon so It's slightly, well... <coughs> I don't know if it's mahogany or something. Hints of red. Not very much. It's still a light wood. But it's sort of a bit ready. I mean, I'm thinking mahogany, something like that. can tell obviously by the sound of the tool and how it feels at this front face. I'll find out from on centre in a second. So, it's nice and gently as I get out for this. near centre that. Right, so any questions folks just while I'm putting this into um, David says anyone have suggestions as to wood it looks too yellowy to be mahogany but it's the your shavings coming off are a sort of orangey colour. Right okay. Um, Obviously know. it's really hard for me because I can't see, see it's it. It's not that cedar is it? <coughs> it's not cedar, no. Uh, Mike says, when do I get my haircut appointment? Mike Atkinson? Yeah. Well, as soon as the coronavirus is over, we'll sort it out. <laughs> uh, yeah, we can all have matching hairdos. <laughs> so I'm just going to mark now for the mortise very quickly. Ba 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 
need to be. Doctor, D, Woodtoner, anyone have suggestions as to what it looks to yellowy to be mahogany? It's got a lovely smell, quite fragrant. Uh, Is that British Hardwoods wood? It's from British Hardwoods, yeah. Uh, so I don't know if everything they stock and sell is a British wood, or they also saw exotics. I mean, it could be a fruit tree, you know. Well, let me tell you what we've got. See if any of these might be right. Oh. Ash, beech, cherry, elm, lime, maple, oak, four different types, sycamore and yew. It's definitely not yew. It's, no, it's not elm, it's not oak, it's not ash. Uh, did you say cherry? Cherry. Cherry. I'm just removing that centre bit. Right, get the bowl guard out now. So I'm guessing it could be cherry. It's not sycamore, it's not lime. Definitely not ash, elm, oak. It might be the right colour for cherry. I'm just having a look now. Gotta start putting a bowl shape to this. Start messing with the uh, the milling. Not not messing, having some fun. We're going with cherry then. Well, I think it, it sort of looks the right shade. Mm. What does it smell like? What's the actual smell like? Oh, it's, it's nice.
feeling your way around this whole route. Blind Woodtoner, Dr. D, I don't think it will be Pador because it's a British hardwood. We think it might be Cherry. Yeah, that's what we're saying. Cherry. Cherry, Cherry. So yeah, every time I've got the lane, I have to reposition and get my mind's eye. Every time I stop the lane, I have to have a feeling of reposition just to get my mind back to uh, where I am. So we've got a nice little bowl shape there, what you call a classic bowl shape. Uh, that's, and there's that little thing I was hearing first and now I feel so very good Just give it a bit of a, a smarting up with a scraper not more And what you want to do is, if you're doing this obviously as a commission piece, what you want is a relatively good finish. I know you're going to power carve it and you're thinking, well, what's the point? Well, if it really is crap and you're going to power carve it and then colour it, you'll still feel, in my case, and you'll see, you know, some shoddy workmanship. So, to, for today's purposes, I'm not going to go, I'd say, all in. But you want a reasonably good finish before you even power carve. This is just five little things up a bit. Just a nice little bunch of stuff. You know, any major tear out or end grain, you know, you'd, you'd be better off getting rid of. And the back face of this piece as well is also uh, wibbly wobbly. And that's why I'm still hearing quite a bit of shudder through the bench and things. I can feel it's quite distorted around the back, but <clears throat> that's not to worry. Right, so generally... Uh, we're ready now to move on to do some power carving. So, uh, I sometimes slash always just manage to nick the foot with one of the carbide discs. So what I'll do, I know that and I do it every time, so I factor that in. Uh, obviously not being able to see how far I'm going to come down because of the radius of the disc. Sometimes I can just catch. Uh, so. I can just smarten that up later with a parting tool. 
Right, so we're going to get ready now to do some carving. Uh, what I'm going to do is disconnect the lathe because if I'm there carving and the spindle locks on and you know if I inadvertently hit a button you know you don't want the motor trying to spin and the spindle's locked and you know I, you know an accident so I always disconnect it so what I'm going to do as well is just lock the spindle so like you guys you would be able to open your doorway and get the right spindle position the the indexing numbers all correlated and everything like that whereas I'm just going to basically as, as, as good as I can but trying to remain organic and random but with a purpose I'm going to use the uh, points of the compass so that's how I do it in my head so, so we can plug this puppy in, disconnect that. Just charging the compressor before with the airline. So there you go. So that's this is that's on its slowest. That's on its fastest there, so I'll have it on its slowest. I'll be back in a minute. Okay. Right. right, obviously, power carving. So you, you need dust protection uh, and eye protection. So always be cognizant of those when you're power carving like this. Uh, I won't put the, the, uh, the extractor on. Right, so I hope you can still hear me. So basically what I do is I feel for what I think is north. So this is the way that I did it, uh, the, the Merlin goblet and bowl that I've just done. So look at that. I'll put my face shield on because I'm going to get too hot with all bound up. At least I've got a bit more breathing space with this. So there we go. So feel for where I need to start. So there with this very thin, you'll see it in a moment, I'll just move it around, there with that very thin, almost blade like, you're getting a very very clean, thin groove. So what I do now is feel, I've still got the pin in there and I'm going to lock it off probably that one, as near as I can to the east or quarter pass position, just by touch. So. Feel for about north. You 
down again. And lock up. So obviously there I've got as near as I can just by touch north, east, south, west. So what you can do now is bisect those so you'll get north, east, south, east, south, west and north, west. But what I'm going to do is change this cutter head to something different and it will give us a different groove. Disconnect it. So I'll just take my time taking these out. So that's the Nick Agar signature disc. Put that back over here. Now what's different about this new version of the King Arthur's Merlin 2 is you haven't got the lock button there. So what you have is this oval flange. And then you get this flange holder. So that goes on like that, just held by hand. And then you will locate that on there. Feel for the nut. Get it started by hand. Where are you? Um, I speckled hens. What is the make of the carving tool? King Arthur's tools. Uh, from Tallahassee in Florida. Uh, it's called the Merlin 2. And then you can just remove the flange holder and put it back. Put it back in your toolbox. I'll just nip that up a bit more. So yeah, rather than having the locking button, you've done away with that and you have that flange holder, which works fine. I suppose there must have been some uh, ideas floating around there, design room while they got rid of the uh, locking button. I don't know why and we've gone for this different way but anywho so what we're going to do now is move and roughly feel for there <coughs> excuse me pardon <coughs> me ice pickletons what is the make of the carving tool so feel for north again doing a different groove thickness there and I'm just holding it edge on here
And interestingly enough, it was following the grain then. And it was sort of like stirring, steering off. Very good. Just feeling around. Right, so what I'm going to do now is start using this to do a scallops texture. Gonna speed up. Steve Combs, a little Leona on and off. So what I'm doing here is just doing a little kiss with it and a little scallop so it's almost like a hammered uh, dimpled effect.
so there you go you there you go you very quickly get a lovely hammered effect to your work I like that effect you do yeah so I've turned the oh let's just get a bit closer there <laughs> And obviously, as I mentioned, I've caught the edge of that foot ever so slightly in a couple of places, but give yourself a bit of a wider foot and you can just thin that down again later. Which is really cool. And anything you're not happy with, you can go back and have a mess with. So what we're gonna do now is change this over and put the roll lock disc on. So Again, unplug the machine. So now we've got the threaded connector and the backing pad. So that just goes in the hole when I can feel it. He says. It's easy when you can see. Tell them about the um, airbrush. What about it? Putting that little bit in. Oh yeah. I've, I've been just cleaning my airbrush today uh, so I was uh, trying to just fine tune and adjust the trigger and the trigger it's a dual action airbrush so down for air back for paint so I've disassembled it and then there's that little almost an S shaped piece of steel with a slot in it called the lever guide that sits in the trigger recess and flipping it took me about an hour to put it back in hilarious I did offer to help yeah <laughs> you did and then again with the flange what a great word flange using the flange device to stop the spindle from turning and then nip up the threaded connector uh, with the spanner that's provided, the little spanner and then again that's just a quick half a turn to lock in place so lots and lots of accessories available uh, and stuff I think there's over 50 accessories that are compatible with this quick detach system and a lot of them you can get that will fit onto air power die grinder so lots of stuff that you can use that are, is a crossover from the automotive industry so we're going to give this a clean up now so this is a 3m roll lock bristle brush that's impregnated with abrasive what color is this one nicola yellow yellow so this is the fine one i think no medium i think unplugged it of course so I hope you've seen that the bristles flare yeah. so this gets in between over through underneath next to 
conform to shapes and patterns and things. So we'll give this a tidy up. So again, that is far more preferable than sanding it by hand. And the bristle brush, remember, imparts its own little subtexture, which is nice, uh, adds another level of interest. So, just have to go around and feel what's going on. It's dead easy, and it, it you know. What used to take you hours to do, you can do in seconds with kit like this. Uh, so if I plug the lathe back in, what I'll do now is just nice and slowly get the parting tool. line up where I need to be. You can have a feel and just tidy that up at the bottom. Tidy the foot up. Cool. Always feel Leona Faye Wood Tunning. LOL Steve, that sound funny. What's he up to? Um <laughs> it's but it was buffering a bit, but right. the internet's buffering a lot at the minute. Uh, Steve Coombs has sent you five dollars. You're freaking amazing, Chris. Thanks for brightening up my Sunday, brother. Cheers, Steve. That's nice. Thank you, Steve. Yeah, we'll put it to good use. <coughs> Don't know when. <laughs> <laughs> when we can get out of this, get out of the ranch, man. <laughs> so there you go. Very simple. I mean, that's taken me 
not not masses of time and I'm explaining it and thinking and having to mess around doing the uh, the points of the compass but it's a good system to use you know if you just start off you know at north then east then south then west then blah 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 and you can just keep going like that and before you know it you'd have lots and lots of flutes pretty equally spaced without using the indexing system uh, but obviously if you're doing uh, something really intricate and you need that extra fine level of detail of course use your indexing facility uh, on the lathe or an indexing system that you might have so there you go that's nice and simple what we're going to do is I'll uh, I'm going to take this off the chuck, sorry, off the face plate, and I'll spin it around, put it on the chuck, do a bit of hollowing out, and then we'll uh, give it a, a textured rim using the Merlin. So, you know, this is just a mess about, guys. It's me just explaining the Merlin 2 to you. Uh, if you haven't seen one in action before, you probably have, uh, but I think this is the first time you've seen a blind guy use a Merlin too. Uh, yeah, so they're not intimidating, uh, very efficient, very effective. Uh, it's supremely well built, very powerful motor. You know, like most things American, you know, over-engineered. So I'm just slapping off the little grub screws that have held that secure to the Looks spindle. like a walnut shell texture, Chris Lyon says. Oh, does it? Yeah, I've just gone for a simple... Obviously, you know, the possibilities are limitless. You've seen what I've done with the Merlin goblet uh, and bowl on my Instagram page. So, you know, that's me doing, you know, serious work and a piece of art. This is just a demonstration, a review. Uh, but yeah, the possibilities are limitless, and it's just whatever you know is in your head and your creativity. Doctor D says, um, "Do you put your trademark under all your work?" Normally, yeah, but I wouldn't. Do, uh, I've dropped that screw. Uh, a bit of find it in the magnetic sweeper. Yeah. Uh, yes, if this is sorry, I'm digressing. Yeah, if this was a piece that I was going to sell, keep, slash, uh, yeah, I would. And it's like my maker's mark, like the, you know, the marks of masons of old and, you know, master craftsmen. But I'm not going to do it today. But yeah, I would put my little spiral in the base of most things. Although I didn't with the Merlin bowl, I went for that percussive texture which was nice you said you like that I did it? yeah so put the old chucker armor on remember guys whether or not it's a bowl or your chuck keep this hand still and turn your hand wheel because <coughs> if you're spinning this end you guarantee you will bloody drop it sooner rather than later or you'll drop your chuck on your piece of work that's below and damage it so keep this still and spin your hand wheel and if you've got a lathe like the craft one on my with the uh, the folding cover drop that and hold your hand wheel just because it's in that plastic cover you know i've just i, I guarantee sooner rather than later because i've done it in the early days, so that's going to go on. It's going to go on there. He says, "Ooh, it's a bit too small." Bugger, should be checked.
So this device that I'm using here now, it's just going to... Uh, hopefully... around here somewhere again another time where eyesight would be really handy Three screws in it. I do this from time to time <laughs> because my wooden template, uh, my wooden disc that I use for sizing the mortise, uh, I, I've done that so it takes into account the the. The hogging away of the material and a bit of sanding, and obviously I've not sanded it, which should take that. But that's nicely uh, out of true now. Widen it up quicker. Ta-da! Live TV. <laughs> so, there's that one. Put three screws in because I knew it'd only take a minute or two, but obviously, don't be taking uh, shortcuts any other time. I'm just going to lock down one spindle screw.
remember not to over tighten as you'll crack your foot and we knew that face was drastically out of round because we felt it before so remember things like that Glenn Senior, afternoon everyone. And obviously, I know that a lot of you guys put a hole in the centre to go to your depth and you're removing that very slow spinning centre portion. I don't do that because a little pit, that little nub, that appears is a reference point for me that I feel on the tip of my tool because I don't want to accidentally if I had a hole there and I overshot I could get a catch or at the very least go on to the wrong side of rotation so I leave that uh, in place so uh, as you see here Feel that. It acts as a bit of a stop for me, and then I can just very slowly remove that. doing Glenn is we're just having a mess around with the Merlin 2 so this is a little piece of cherry and on the reverse side I've just done uh, well it'll be eight grooves 
uh, just very simply straight on with the edge of the Merlin 2 accessory carbide discs. So I've just hollowed this out a little bit uh, and then what I'm going to do is I'll do some grooves or a different texture or something on the rim here. Uh, so we're just having a play around So, it's got my little pot of accessories here. He says wicked. Wicked. It is wicked. So, get my flange, flange holder. So that just, uh, does the job of what the little locking button used to do, which uh, Arthur and his team have removed now. Uh, from the Merlin. So that's off, and remove that. So, We'll get the thin one on again. Just feeling for the little retaining screw. So just remember if you get a Merlin 2 you don't get this little plastic storage box. That's what we've got just to keep my bits safe and uh, accessible. Uh, but it does come with that little uh, little bag that hold all to tote everything around in. Where, where did you get the Merlin from? Glyn's asking. Right, uh, Glyn Senior, where did you get the Merlin from, Chris? There you go. <laughs> right, thank you. The Merlin was given to me. Uh, I bet you think he's a right sod that Chris will get where water can. Well, I'm I'm good friends with Nick Agar, uh, and I'm very honoured to call him a friend now. Uh, and Nick Agar follows my progress with interest from America now. Uh, and of course, it was Nick that taught me how to power carve at his studio in Devon. So Nick has developed the Merlin Two and the range of accessories with King Arthur's Tools, Arthur Aveling that owns King Arthur's Tools. So uh, the the actually video called Nicola at Christmas, Nick yeah, and yeah. Arthur Avely. Yeah, who's, who's friend is he? <laughs> yeah, yeah, Nicola's friend actually. So I thought I'd recognise that voice. Anyway, it was them pair calling from Florida. So they said they would be honoured. Uh, yeah, they'd be honoured. I'd be honoured. Flipping heck. If uh, I wouldn't mind using the Merlin 2 on my pieces and demos. Uh, so I said flipping heck. <laughs> Duh, no brainer. So yeah, I was giving it Glenn. Uh, it was given to me by uh, King Arthur's Tools and Nick Agar. And this is Nick's own design of disc that's on now. Very thin, but it has carbide on both three faces. Back, edge, and then the front face. Uh, and it's, it's an absolute amazing bit of kit. So I'm going to disconnect the lathe again. So you get them in the UK from Turner's Retreat, the Tool Post, and Classic Hand Tools. I think uh, they do uh, the Merlin and and the accessories. And you can, depending on how much you want to spend, they do a different, uh, a few different specifications of kit. You can get the fixed speed or the variable speed. They sent me the variable speed. Uh, so yeah, I love it. Love it, love it, love it. So, right. So if I feel like I just have where that groove was, and then lock it in place there. Get 
Put the dust mask back on. It's easier if I just wear this. I'll have to shout. Just a second. Can you still hear me? Yes. That's good. So have a feel for where I am now. So again using my method of the points of the compass as opposed to the indexing numbers that I can't see, uh, just using that that system I uh Ice Pickletons is YG closed too. What? Yorkshire Grit. No, they're saying Turner's is closed, um or even online. Alright. The tool post, I got a notification the other day. Yeah. That the tool post He's still trading. Oh right, okay. Uh, it was when I got that notification anyway. Um, Glyn says that he's going in every other day to make grit and ship orders on his own. Right, okay. So there you have it, a nice little grooved Again, carrying on that walnut theme. What I'll do is uh, just change this disc out. Only takes seconds to change the disc out for accessories. And your kids out playing. Could you do me a favour, Nicola? Mm -hmm. 
you go under the bench over there and get me a non-slip mat, please. Because what I'll do is I'll just take this off the spindle now, leave it on the chuck, and I'll just put it on this. So what I'll do is I'll go for that little hammered walnut effect inside. Just put them back so I don't lose them. Swig of tea. Which one did I do? So um, what I'm going to do is just, I'll probably put this over a couple of times. Can you see me there, Nicola? You think? Yeah, it's not, yeah, it should be all right, that, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to, I've got better access there now, so... Dr. D. Wittener, I'm on M6TH, tin in four years and number two micro fine.
Blind Woodtoner, Mum's the Word, Glyn. Mum's the Word. Mum's the Word, indeed. So what I'll do now is I'll just put the roll lock bristle brush back on. Uh, and I've opted for the softer one, uh, just so we don't lose too much detail. Away. A lot of two in and throwing in this game. A lot of throwing. Wonderful. And then what, what sometimes it doesn't harm just to just tidy things up with a bit of paper. So luckily we Nearly there. This really does have a hand car feel to it. It's really nice actually. Very rustic. Mm. I just like that effect that you get. That little that hammered effect. Well that that effect is great if you want to do a verdigree. You yeah. know, or that hammered metal and copper and things so <laughs> got a bit of a sand in the base Glenn says you mean it's all wonky Chris intentional Intentionally wonky. He says, yeah, right. Instagram, 
Now, Stefan Kier will like your... He's got some uh, food safe. And I'll just oil it in them. Because everyone was saying it was like a wall nut. I can have yeah. that for nuts. Yeah. Yeah, it does look like a wall nut. So what I, I like to measure out carefully, it's a joke of course, that means that because yeah, that will fall on. Like Glyn say seriously that looks great Chris. Seriously, thanks Glyn. Well it was just a little, just a little afternoon play around just uh, because Matthew who was doing my videos uh, he's gone back to Hong Kong now because things have improved massively in China they're almost back to normal in Hong Kong so he's gone back there now uh, so his time with me is done and we'd actually filmed a, a Merlin 2 review but we don't know where it is probably in Hong Kong with him on a memory yeah. card. So we thought we'd do this. Uh, to give a shout out to obviously Arthur and Nick as a thank you uh, for sending me this. Swipe off the excess. Glenn Senior. Seriously, that looks great, Chris. It's funny how it, it reads it out. Is that the light? Yeah, lighter. Yeah. Right, so we're going to do the Do you always use cellulose sealer? This is a uh, food safe finish. I do always use, when I'm after a high gloss or, or a polished finish yes I do always use cellulose uh, sanding sealer and then uh, friction polish on top of that that's just my that's what I've always used really since I started turning my finish of choice unless uh, I want it to be food safe and then I can use obviously food safe oil like this one from Terry and the guys at Chestnut, so. But we generally have sort of like a healthy snack in the evening of nuts. I do like walnuts. Make sure I get plenty in. Glenn says he's seen some people use Yorkshire grit in their finishing regime. Has he? Yeah. Ooh, uh, it sounds like an interesting product. Do tell more. <laughs> Dr. D. Woodtoner, I use Shellac Sealer from Chestnut. Yeah, it's just yeah, it's just what you sort of like you 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 used to, you're happy with. I, I again with me being a stickler for routine and process and things like that. Obviously, uh, cellulose sanding sealer and friction polish work really well for me. Obviously, in between that is a, a good dollop of uh, a certain abrasive paste. We all know. Both types. So just again, just wipe off the excess. Doctor D says you're a sniffer. I'm a sniffer. I 
I'm a sniffer Bamberries. Glenn says, there we go, I knew I could nudge you in the right direction. I knew what he was after. <laughs> I was just playing hardball. <laughs> so, uh, there you have it folks, a very quick and simple walnut bowl, uh, power carved with the Merlin two. They're just, you know, basic simple techniques uh, and I just wanted to demonstrate how I try and sort of like divide bowls up into segments, not being able to see an indexing. Uh, it's simple, I just use the points of the compass and get ever and ever uh, smaller it, as and when I need to. So. Nick says that looks great. Chris. Wayne Bigfoot Woodcraft. Hi, just popping in a fur few minutes as sorting the summer house out of all the stuff I were taking to make as central for folk. Valerie is turning. So there you go, a piece of cherry, food safe finish, power carved, walnut style, and food safe finish so we can have that for nuts. So there you go. Dead That's easy, dead cool. simple. Uh, if you're in the market for a, a brilliant piece of kit, uh, you won't go far wrong with the King Arthur's Tools, Merlin 2, and the Nick Agar signature series of accessories. So check them out, get yourself one, uh, and have a lot of fun, and just start creating some really beautiful textured uh, pieces. Uh, and if you haven't yet seen them, go over to my Instagram, at Blind Woodturner. Instagram? Now, Matt Long, I had sent you a video. <laughs> uh, check out the uh, Instagram. Uh, pictures I've got of the Merlin goblet and bowl that I've just done in uh, deference to this amazing bit of kit. So that's it folks, we're done. Uh, had a great afternoon and I hope you guys uh, have enjoyed hanging out with us for a bit. So until next time, keep safe, keep on turning. Uh, and don't forget to give us a thumbs up. Yeah, if, like. if you've not given us a thumbs up, would you please? That would be really nice, thank you. Yeah. We'd really appreciate it. We thrive on thumbs up. We do. Yeah. Right then, till the next time. Keep on turning, everyone. Stay safe. Bye. Bye. Finish. But finish. Alert. End.